Hey team, Jen here. It is week four, and I know um, that for me in my courses, week four is a very important week. In week four, I feel like I'm really dredged in the course and that the course is becoming alive, taking on a life of its own. And sometimes in week four, I can feel as if I'm losing control a little bit as the course goes on to become um, maybe more than I intended and sometimes maybe less than I intended. So week four is a very integral week to really take the reins in your course and steer it where you think that it should be. With that in mind, this week I have a couple things that I want to address. First of all, I've noticed from discussion in the boards and also from emails that I've been getting from you that problem students tend to make themselves um, visible, at least by week four. So many of us in our courses, I know I can definitely speak to this, um, are experiencing problem students. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the problem student or students and how to address that, how to transform what is a problem into something that is beneficial for learning. So that's the first thing that I want to address today. The second thing is I want to really put more emphasis this week on your responses in the discussion forum. Are you pushing students hard enough in the forums? Um, are you being aggressive enough? Are you being enough of a naysayer? Uh, are you probing hard enough? The answer to a lot of those questions for most of you is mm, not quite yet. So I wanted to really talk about some of the particulars of discussion board engagement this week kind of piggybacking on last week's discussion. Um, the third thing that I want to discuss today is what to do with your wealth of expertise. So many of you, especially newer instructors, are really excited about letting students know that you're an expert, that you're a PhD, that you love this stuff, and that you have a lot of knowledge to share. It can be a little bit confusing about where to put that in the course, how to uh, reveal this to your students so that they can use it well. There are some suggestions that I have for those of you who really like to offer additional lecture style notes, where to put those in the course so that it makes sense um, and doesn't hinder learning and doesn't hinder the function of other uh, areas of your online course. And the final thing I want to talk about is uh, I want to give you more tips for writing great announcements. So once again, here in week four, we have a, a large list of things that I wanted to cover. Let's start with the problem student. I know that for me, every semester I have at least one student who presents some really interesting conundrums for the class dynamic. Um, this student can be disruptive in a number of ways. For example, the student could be attacking other students' perspectives or views in the discussion forum. Um, this student could be sending you emails criticizing your approaches or pushing you to clarify things that you feel are already clear enough or that you've already clarified. This student could be someone who's challenging your evaluation methodologies or challenging the content of the course or critiquing it. It could be a student who is trying to stir things up in the forums in a way that creates a negative energy. So a problem student can take uh, any of those forms, any combination of those forms, or even other forms than that. Um, when you have a problem student in your course, one thing that I have found very helpful because it jives with my teaching persona, although it may or may not jive with yours, is I like to be extremely visible when there's problems arising in the forums. So if this problem student has been very public with his or her disruptions, I like to make it extremely apparent immediately uh, by addressing it straight out. Uh, for example, I once had a student in a course who wanted to really attack my dress in my videos that I make. And she was asking questions like, I think it's really inappropriate that Jen has a little lace in her v-neck. It's, it's great that I'm wearing this shirt today. Um, so I actually made a video um, in which I addressed issues of dress in academia and raised questions about how our attire can affect our how we're perceived um, and the, the you know 
the evolution of our profession um, and to really come up with some discussion about what our physical presentation can do for our instruction, how it affects our pedagogy, how it affects the classroom environment. And what actually happened, I was really nervous about it, was fruitful. Um, the discussion was so great and students really got involved actually with uh, discussing some of that. So um, I also had another student who really wanted to talk about her Christianity in almost every single discussion post. So immediately, whenever you're talking about religion or political viewpoints, students can get really heated and they can get distracted from what you want them to do. On the other hand, whenever you bring in big uh, umbrella um, ethics, you know, ethical ways of thinking about topics, you don't want to just totally get rid of that kind of discourse because it can be really fruitful. So your job is to take something that seems too big and to help students to break it up, to analyze it, to make it more applicable, um, and also to keep it, of course, in the boundaries of what you want from students. So one thing that I did is I said, well, you could talk about your, your love of God in every single post. That's totally okay. However, you have to always be manifesting every step of the way how your ideology, how your passionate belief in a certain system applies and transforms or challenges the way that we read this text. I said, so whenever you are making a large sweeping observation about whatever it is, Christianity or abortion or re the Republican Party, you want to make sure that that observation is closely tied to, for example, your reading of chapter three of The Stranger and this really salient passage in which Merceau is questioning, um, you know, creationism or whatever. So observations like that are okay as long as they're in context. I always want to encourage students to bring the beef with them. Bring their hardcore ethics. Oh, totally bring them with you. But this isn't a place to discuss your beliefs and to debate whether or not your beliefs are correct. It is, however, a safe space where you can read your beliefs into the text through your close reading and analysis processes to show why your belief systems have relevance to what's on the table. So it's a matter of slanting what students are bringing. When students bring disruptive topics like that to the forum, I always shout out a large yell of excitement because it's an opportunity for you to get things really hot but you have to negotiate the difference between being hot and being disrespectful and there's a fine line there you want to make sure that students are practicing talking about these hot topics in a way that's very professional and academic tell them it gives them practice for when they become a professor and they're going to have to negotiate uh this brutal sea of students coming in with baggage with you know, ways of feeling about the world. Um, that's a good thing, but it needs to be considered in an academic context. So I think about it that way. Um, I always like to be very transparent with students about what my expectations are. And I like to be forthcoming to tell them, you are not meeting those expectations, right? Here they are, this is why I have them. And you are not meeting that for whatever reason. And it's very important. If a student challenges your grading, if a student challenges your approach, I think it's always a good idea to address that student by saying, you know, first of all, I really appreciate that you are so interested in my pedagogy and so interested in how courses work. Let's see what we can take from this, um, you know, imposing more questions for that student. For example, why why does the, this approach um aggravate you? What do, what would you like to see happen instead and why? So if you can get a better idea about where the student is coming from by posing some critical questions for her to consider, then the student will start to process and start to critically think through her own um, analysis of your of your teaching and you can also process through that. I always invite students to come to my online office hours and have real discussions about these things because they are important. Um, students who are attacking you or questioning you, 
Um, sometimes they just really want to have a discussion about, you know, what it means. They want to know that you have a reason for the choices that you're making. On the other hand, that isn't always the case. Sometimes you will have students who are just be, trying to be mean, trying to stir things up. It's true. It happens. In that case, I am always here for you any step of the way to help you with those problem students. So never hesitate to reach out to me if you have a problem student and you're just not sure how to handle her. Um, so I want to put that out there for you. Moving on, are you pushing hard enough in the DBs? Well, if your student is being controversial, as I said, that could be a really good thing you should be controversial in your forums too. In almost every single response that you make, I wanna see you aggressively challenging students' perspectives. I wanna see you bringing something new, something hardcore, something controversial, something to stir things up. When you go into, when you go into the discussion forum, you wanna think about yourself as the ultimate naysayer. You can support things, but you wanna probe. You wanna flesh out. You wanna scratch the surface, nay. You want to tear it down. So it, your role as a discussion, your role in the discussion forum is to make students uncomfortable, is to get them a little squirmy, have them questioning their ideas, questioning their approaches, and constantly pushing them towards something new, something interesting, something debatable. Your job is to get hot discussion going. And if you can do that, you're doing your job. So I want you to ask yourself this week if you're doing that in the forum. It doesn't take 500 sentences to do it. It could take three. Um, but you want to probe in deeply. That's what I'm looking for, for from you every week. Uh, so ask yourself if you feel that you're doing that. And ask yourself in week four how you could do that more. The next thing I want to talk about is your expertise. I have seen some amazing lecture style notes in the announcement section. One of you in this class is doing an exceptional job of integrating lecture style notes with all of the other functions of the announcement. So kudos to you. Um, but most of you who are putting in lecture notes into the announcements are only doing that and the lectures are extremely long. They have Excuse me, they have a works cited page. It almost seems as if you're copying and pasting papers that you wrote during your uh, whatever, during your PhD program. I want to iterate that there is a place for you to flaunt your expertise in the courses. And you should flaunt it when it's appropriate and when it's useful for student development and student ways of thinking about material. However, the announcement section is probably the last section that you ever want to put that in. Um, there are so many other places to put it. I actually am a huge advocate of creating additional forums or creating your own thread within the module forum in which you make a post with lecture notes that students can respond to and interact with. That way they can see the merit of your expertise. They can see the merit of the observations that you make and they can have a conversation about it. If you put it in the announcement section, it's not doing anything really except for giving students anxiety. <laughs> um, it's giving them a lot to read without a sense of why they're being asked to read it, what its merit is, how it relates to the deliverables for the week, how it relates to the module content, how it relates to their forum post, how it relates to the work that they handed in. They're like, what is this doing here? It seems like a bomb dropped in the announcement section. You can also add your lecture notes to the module reading. There's a section in the module that you can edit and you can actually add your own additions to that module reading um, by attaching your your, your notes as as an attachment um, right there. So there it's, it's handy. They can read it alongside with the other module notes and it makes sense where it is. The third option is to email your students once a week with additional module notes. It's separate from the announcements. It's separate from the other functions of the course, but it's letting them know that you're offering here some extra support. So I want to see a lot of this lecture style expertise bomb disappearing from the announcement section. Um, if you're using five or six sentences of overview, awesome. If you're launching into a podium performance of 
what you've learned in your PhD program, that should probably go elsewhere. So I'd be happy to talk with you about where it should go, why it should go there for you, why it shouldn't go in the announcement and what the announcement should do. But you could always visit my week one video where I outline all of those things for you. They need to be reiterated because I'm seeing a lot of instructors continuing to do this kind of thing. And we need to nip it in the bud. It's not functional there. So think about function. It's so important in an online course that everything has a very clear purpose, a very clear function that students can count on. Yeah? Okay. So finally, one more thing I want to talk about is some tips for writing great announcements. One thing that I've seen many of you doing um, so far in the course is that you'll hone in on one key thing every single week to highlight. Um, for example, one instructor in week two highlighted on the importance of the MLA, recognizing self-plagiarism. She had a little blurb about um, what MLA looks like at the graduate level, why we use it. Uh, it inclu she included links and resources. This was all to lead up to the first paper where she expected to see that students were appropriately using MLA. So every single week, if you want to pull one nugget out of the, the whole package that you want to really highlight, you really want to hone in on, you're going to make a short blurb that's addressing just that one thing to give students focus. And when you do your grading, you let them know, this is something that I'm really going to prize this week. I'm really going to get down and dirty with your argumentation style. Particularly, I'm going to be looking for your use of counter argument. Here's a couple words about that and how you can apply it to this week's response paper. So when students are seeing that your announcement is more than just the basics, more than just an overview of what's coming and tips for success, but that you're really getting dirty with one aspect and each, you know, in 10 weeks, you have 10 aspects that you're essentially, you're really helping students to grapple with the complexities of the genres that you're asking them to write in. So that is my final tip for you with announcements. Those announcements are so important, aren't they? Hope you guys have a great week. Please make sure that you are watching my video every single week as I notice that very few of you are actually watching the video. That really makes me want to cry. Because I see that, um, for one, it shows that you're not really um, looking for thinking more critically about your approaches to the course. Now, why wouldn't you be doing that? Why wouldn't you want to be having conversation? Continue these conversations with me in the forums. Visit the forums every week and post your questions. Let's have real discussions about what matters and what we're doing in teaching online. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.